Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial on the basics of using SPSS syntax for students. Um, my name is uh, Erik van Inge, and I will show you how to set up a syntax file in this tutorial. Uh, and by, do so in, by doing so, I hope to save you from some problems and frustrations, because working with syntax can be frustrating at the start. It's usually frustrating because of two reasons. One is that you're getting error messages you don't understand. And two is that you don't know how to do something in the right way. So in this and subsequent videos, um, I'm going to try to help you with that. And I promise you that once you master working with syntax, it will provide you with several benefits. So these benefits are that it's more efficient once trained it allows you to reuse data transformations from previous projects and it helps you to organize your own thoughts which is also very important um, but even more importantly is that uh, it helps replication so you should be able to explain what you did to your fellow students um, to the supervisor of your uh, thesis and of course you should, should be able to reconstruct uh, reconstruct it for yourself so replication is very important however it will take time to master the usage of syntax so be prepared to invest some time in it and, and exercise and th there is nothing more instructive than making mistakes and learning from them Okay, let's start. So first we're going to download the data and save them because this is where um, usually the first problems start to arise. So you can find the data here at this location um, and you can just scroll down to the section getting started with SPSS syntax and then clicking on you can download the accompanying data set here. Um, but let's not left click it but let's right click it um, so that we get to choose save link as um, because we want to make sure that you save the file to a location where you can actually find it back and if you're doing this tutorial in a computer class um, a USB stick would be convenient or you can save it to your network space uh, but don't save it to the hard disk of your computer in the classroom because those hard disks are erased every night <coughs> uh, and since I'm working on my own computer I can safely save it to my hard disk and um, I'm gonna save it in the folder C temp as in temporary save it okay now that we have the data we can start using SPSS um, and we're gonna we're gonna open the program but importantly we're not gonna open the data because we will do everything from our syntax file uh, from now on and I'll, I'll show you the reason why we do that uh, in a minute so let's open SPSS takes a while on my computer let's skip this and let's make sure that you can see what I'm doing like this so now open a new syntax file because by going to the mm, file menu and then new syntax and now you can actually see it um, and when you use syntax comments are very helpful and they help you remember what you did and why um, and, and all the text after a comment command will be ignored by SPSS. So the easiest way to include a comment is to start a line with a star or an asterisk. We're going to start typing the first line um, of syntax here. And usually it's helpful to indicate what the, the syntax file is for. So for example, we could type this is the syntax file for my first SPSS 
session. Um, and by the way, if you have a hard time reading the text, make sure that YouTube is set to broadcast the highest quality video. Um, and make sure you end this line with a dot. This is important uh, because uh, you have to end every command with a dot. Also comments. If you don't, SPSS assumes that the, the, the command continues on the next line. And uh, forgotten dots are, are, are probably the most common causes of errors in the computer labs we teach. Okay, um, in order to use data for your analysis, you have to load them into your computer's memory. And the command get file takes care of this. In this command, you have to specify the full path of the data. And if you don't know it by heart, you can look it up in Windows Explorer. So I'm going to go to Windows Explorer here um, and here. So this is the uh, location where I stored the tutorial data set. And if I left click the title bar here at the top, then you s see that it changes into the actual path. So the actual path is C temp. Um, and of course, I also need the name of the data set. So I'm going to type that here in order to be able to copy it. SPSS tutorial.sav. And then I just select it, hit Control C in order to copy it, and then paste it in this index file. So um, we're ready to use the get file command here um, and you can apply it by simply typing get file equals um, followed by the uh, full path of your data set so just hit control V to paste it oops like this uh, but we have to make sure that we add quotation marks so quotation mark here and another one here followed, of course, by a dot again. And obviously you have to replace the path with your own path if you're doing this on your own computer. Um, so the next step is to run the command. Um, every line you type will only become effective after executing it. And if you want to run commands from the syntax file, you can select them with your mouse uh, like this and then hit control R or alter alternatively you can also press this button this play button over here and if no line is selected like this um, SPS, SPSS will just run the current line so if I'm standing over here and if I hit uh, control R it will run the command like this um, so this is the output window and we see nice, quite nicely a get file command with, without any kind of errors. So, so please always check the output window and make sure there are no error messages. Um, and, and if there are, it's most likely that you misspecified the location of your file. So in that case, no data will be visible and you have to correct the path and run the get file command again. Um, and if the path is correct, ch uh, please check the, the line should type for missing dots because that's also something that goes wrong very often. Um, another thing that is helpful at this point is uh, to specify what you want the output to look like. Um, usually you want both the values and labels of your variables in the output. Um, and in order to accomplish that, we're going to add one additional line to our syntax file and I'm just gonna uh, copy paste it so it's uh, this one it's set t numbers equals both o numbers equals both o vars equals both and t vars equals both dot I'm not gonna explain how this works uh, right now but it's convenient to add it at the start of every syntax file you create all right, so we are now ready to start working on the data and perform analyses. 
Uh, but before we start, please save the syntax file. And again, make sure you save it to a location where you can actually find it back. So in my case, I'll just save it to the same folder as the data. Uh, I'm just going to call it tutorial one. All right, so that's saved. So by saving your syntax, you, you avoid a lot of frustration because um, SPSS can crash or your computer can crash and then everything will be lost. And uh, trust me, you want to do this because I once had a student burst into tears after she had worked on her syntax file in an entire class and then forgot to save it before she shut down her computer. Okay, so this completes tutorial number one. Uh, you now know how to set up a syntax file and in the next one I'll show you the best way of working with this syntax file.